Six years ago, I started my first job as a retail banker, but I needed mode of transportation to get me to my workplace, so I didn't have a car back then. Or a motorcycle, so I started to look around for the cheapest option, which is also fast and fun. Electric bicycles in Belgium are limited to 25 km an hour, or 250 watts, which is pretty boring. But you have a faster option, which is called a speed pedelec which goes up to 45 km an hour. No, wait, how much do they cost? Well, they are pretty expensive. And that is why I built my own. Now, you might be wondering, was it worth it? Well, first of all, how much did it cost? So the whole project costed me 785 euros, which compared to the e-bikes you can buy with the same power is way cheaper. So financially, it definitely makes a lot of sense to buy a conversion kit. Now, another question you might have is, have I ever experienced any problems with it? No, I have never had any issues with the ESC, battery or hub motor. And I have ridden the bike in the most extreme weather conditions. I have also driven it off-road many times and covered quite a few kilometers with it. The bicycle is now 6 years old and as you can see there is some superficial damage. That's why I'm going to fix up the bike. <laughs> Another question you might have, how fast is a 48 volt 1000 watt e-bike? Is it faster than a Honda CB500F? Only one way to find out. The first win goes to the motorcycle, let's do a second race. As far as grandpa's concerned, you're both pieces of shit! So no, it's not as fast. But what did you expect? It's a 50 horsepower bike. That being said, because it's electric, you get all the power instantaneously. And the acceleration is definitely sufficient for your daily commute. You will be a lot faster than other 250 watt electric bicycles. And you can keep up with most scooter and city traffic. The conversion kit I linked in the description has a 1500 watt option. So if you want extra power, you can choose that one. The battery is probably the first part you could replace. Unfortunately, it's also the most expensive part. I have a 48 volt 30 amp hour battery. With this battery, I was able to cover about 30 kilometers when I first bought it, putting the bike on the highest setting and hardly padding at all. After all these years and so many charges, the capacity of the battery has reduced considerably. Now I could cover about 20 kilometers at the highest setting without paddling. This means the battery has retained approximately 70% of its capacity over time, which is in line with expectations. Now the ESC, or electronic speed controller, I built a little aluminum box around it to protect it. Hey guys, I bought some new parts. Dude, who's gonna pay for that? Well, I used to work in a bank, so... You made minimum wage at that job, and you know it. Yeah, I was pretty naive back then. Are you just gonna stand there or are you going to help? Nah, I'm good. I don't wanna get my clothes dirty. What an asshole. I'm going to start with some of this brake on the hub motor. Ta-da! This bike doesn't have a mount for brake calipers, so we're going to have to create our own. And now I just have to bend the metal inwards. After hours and hours tweaking this piece of metal, I finally managed to put the brake pads on this piece of metal and align it perfectly with uh, this brake. I'm really happy with the result. Was it worth it? Now, you might be wondering why I'm doing this project. The reason is that after 6 years of heavy usage, one of those pins broke off, so I can't charge the bike anymore. So I ordered new XLR connectors so that I can replace it and start using the bike again. Let's see if it works. And it does, beautifully. Now what about the top speed of the bike? The top speed is around 45 km an hour, but that depends on a couple of factors. Is the battery full? Is there a lot of headwinds? Are you pedaling? Are you going uphill? All of those things will impact your top speed of course. Now, if everything plays in your favor, you can go up to 55 km an hour or faster. We've come at the final part of this video, which is reinstalling the wires. You really can't mess with this set, it's just color coded and you just have to plug it in. It's so easy to use. I'll link it in the description below if you want to buy this set. 
I feel like the newer sets, they use like these old types of connections, so they're evolving backwards, which doesn't make any sense. But these ones, really easy, you can just plug them in and enjoy your bike. Now if you use this set and you're going to install the screen here, this is going to be the highest point of your steer. If you have to flip over your bike to change a tire, it may break, which happened to me. So that's why I would advise you to use horns like this. So this is the highest point. Next up is the power button of the bike and also you can change the settings with it. Now if you buy this set, you normally don't need to solder anything except from the connection from the battery to the ESC. Although 6 years ago I didn't know how to solder so I didn't do that and I just connected the wires by twisting them together which also works fine. But now that I know how to solder I'm going to do it the right way. I bought an extra set of disc brakes because I only had one that I installed in the back. It works really well and I will link it in the description below if you're interested. I'm not going to replace the front brake because when you brake with this one, it sends a signal to the motor to shut off and to regen brake. Actually there were two of those but I broke one so the back one is a normal brake. The moment I want to place the ESC back on its place, which was here, I realized why I didn't choose the biggest tire at the back and I put the biggest tire at the front of the bike. The back tire is so thick that it can't fit in between this. I'm gonna have to take it apart again and switch the front tire to the back tire. I knew there was a reason why it didn't work, but I didn't remember what the reason was. Stupid dog! I'll take some foam and a piece of an inner tube for the tire. This might be one of the most obvious drawbacks of a conversion kit. When you buy an electric bike, all the cables are integrated inside of the frame of the bike. With the conversion kit, they run alongside of the frame. So you have to think about the position of the cables. But with enough zip ties, that shouldn't be an issue. We've come at the final part of the build and let's to put the battery back in and see if it works. And it did. So in conclusion, e-bike conversion kits are a great alternative to regular e-bikes because they're so much cheaper and you can really make it your own by customizing it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in the next one.